Welcome back. It is still the run-up. And like we promised, we have Dr. Chikuma Okoli on the line. He is a political economist, and he's going to be having these conversations with us. Good morning, Dr. Chikuma. Are you there? Hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. All right. So it's been in the news that the federal government has decided to stop waiving taxes for high profile individuals and, you know, people doing businesses in Nigeria and even in the West Af in West Africa. How do you react to this decision? Yeah, um, you know, uh, for me, it is a mixed one. Uh, first, it's important for us to understand why do we tax? There are quite fundamental reasons why the sovereign, that is the government, who want to tax businesses operating within or to tax uh, importation, you know, in form of places or levy on things that are, you know, created outside or manufactured outside and then important. So they do that through the customs. Okay, so if we look at those, all those generalists as, you know, or, or broadly from the past perspective of tax, we understand that the central objective of taxation is one, for the government to raise revenue to perform its function. And what is this function? You know, uh, provision of social amenities, provision of infrastructures, payment of salaries. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you know, another reason for taxation, you know, is to regulate. For instance, you may want to tax tobacco, you may want to tax alcohol, heavily okay you may want to tax you know um uh, some form of hoteling gambling and all that regularly as a form of regulating okay again you want to protect your economy where you place heavy burden on imported materials okay so that you can you know support and or create a noble environment for local production which will have a triple effect or trickle down effect mm -hmm. on employment generation and what we call, you know, having forward and backward linkages in the economy. By forward and backward linkages, simply where the production of a certain item could lead or generate the emergence of real related industries. Okay. So that's, for instance, if we have uh, local refining. Okay, there are other petrochemical industries, you know, that will come up, you know, to service the local refining and to use the bad, uh, the byproduct of the local refineries. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, is why, you know, the government taxes. Now, when the government provides tax waivers, okay, just uh, to provide theoretical underpinning to all this, when the government provides tax waivers, what it means is that one, it could be that it's trying to support a certain sector of the economy, okay, or to protect some emerging industries, okay, mm -hmm. or to protect local industry. That is when you provide waivers to local manufacturers. When you provide waivers to importation, it could be that it's trying to facilitate, you know, um, bringing in of certain goods that are necessary, for instance, educational products, mm -hmm. you know, product meant for little children, for instance, pharmaceuticals. Okay, so you could reduce tax or whatever import levy you place on them so that they could easily come in and so that, you know, people can quickly afford them if we classify them as essentials or basic need, you know. Uh, but the story of Nigeria and, you know, as a social scientist, I usually say that Nigeria tend to defy many theories of social sciences, okay. So we must always be careful, you know, when we are um, analyzing, okay, some certain government policies and we must do that dispassionately irrespective of political leaning okay so what you find uh in the public space most times is that you know we tend to look at it are they trying to um you know focus or trying to disarm some of their political opponents and all that so uh, but that's not the case the point is that you know the case of nigeria experience has shown you know that we tend to defy many theories okay so uh, in in one of the uh, recent uh, report not too recent anyway uh that's uh i, I think it was action aid that published it a few years ago mm -hmm. you know in a decade you know action aid you know um the report showed that nigeria lost over three billion us dollars to tax waivers three billion us dollars now what is the implication this is the money that could have gone into the coffers of the government 
that the government would have used to provide infrastructure, to support education, you know, provide basic need and all that. So what it means is that by granting tax waivers, direct one direct and short term Take note, short-term impact of that on the government is that the government loses revenue that it should have gotten from business agents, okay? And by losing, of course, you know that we have serious revenue crisis right now in Nigeria. If you look at our debt service to revenue, you know, our recent analysis, you know, by the Minister of Finance, by the way, shows that we will have to borrow, I think, for every 100 Naira we earn, we have to borrow about 19 Naira to be able to service debt. Okay, so when you are borrowing to service debt, you are... Okay, uh, while we're waiting for him to reconnect, uh, he has made a lot of points and a lot of sense already. But then we're an economy that thrives on importation. Uh, mm -hmm. And you hear people saying things like, I beg, I beg, I beg, the price is not the same again <laughs> because dollar have gone up. Mm -hmm. And that, that is also because they buy whatever it is that they're trying to sell to you yeah. from outside the country. So I, I, if people who are into importation usually used to get tax waivers and things were that expensive i want to understand now that the tax is going to be uh you know waived entirely i'm oh, sorry the tax is going to be brought back fully now mm -hmm. they have to pay taxes it's a scary scenario because um <laughs> like you said mm. when the tax taxes were waived or there was waiver on the taxes. I don't know the terminology they yes. use, but I, they waive it. Or I think he's back. He will tell us okay, better. So, <laughs> Dr. Uh, Coley, are you there? Yes, yes. All right, so, please. I, I, you know, so I, I think that I, I overheard you saying that when the taxes were there, consumers could not buy because prices were high. Yes. We are concerned I, I, that we are concerned that our economy thrives on importations and the implication yeah. of this return to the normal taxes is what we are trying to wrap our heads around yes yeah yeah that's the point you know I, I try to lay the background on the theoretical reasons why we tax and why we provide waivers hmm. now if you actually tax and you use the money and make um for instance if you are taxing you know placing levies import levies on uh you know products that are manufactured outside for instance cars okay and it is not just enough to place levies on them to, re to raise revenue. The foundation, the, the, the basic objective that you should pursue is that while you are levying, you know, cars that are imported from outside, you should provide enabling environment for local manufacture so that with time you can manufacture locally. Unfortunately, take, my, take, take note of what I said earlier that we defy all theories in Nigeria. While we have been taxing all these things, we have not been able to support local manufacturing. Let me give you an example of the uh, of vehicles, for instance. If you bought a Toyota Camry, you know, um, 1999 model, say 10 years or 12 years ago, it was 1.1 million. Today, it is about 2.5 million. Okay, that is because of not just um, exchange rates, because also of what you pay to the customs and all that. So the point you are making is valid. One, as we increase tax, it is true that the government will rake in so much money in terms of revenue. But who is at the receiving end? The consumer, because there is the pass-through effect. The manufacturer or the importer would pass that through to the consumer. Now, it is only when the government has efficiently utilized the tax that it has gotten in form of revenue, you know, to provide basic amenities. Okay, that it will cushion the effects on the consumer. Okay, for instance, you have tax um, uh, 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 bottle water producing companies, and so a, 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 a bottle of water has increased from 100 naira to 200 naira. We expect that there should be running water in our across our street, so that the poor person may not depend on buying bottle water. Okay, so it will now be the rich that are indirectly being taxed. But situation where you are taxing bottled water and you have not used the revenue, you know, to provide running water, you know, <laughs> for the for, 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 for the poor masses, the poor masses will definitely find a way of continue buying that bottled water that has increased from 100 naira to 200 naira because of taxation. Mm. So the implication is that you are taxing poverty. And that is what we are finding. So a situation where the government, you know, um, increases tax, but does not use the revenue to provide basic communities. And secondly, 
is unable to create efficient environment for the local manufacturing, for more local industries to thrive so that there will be competition that will bring down prices. Then you are just passing the burden on the, you know, the, the masses because definitely the, the, the producer or the importer is rational and would always want to make profit. And to make profit, two things, he will pass the tax to the consumer or he will close down industries and there will be unemployment. And then even the little tax that you are collecting, you will not get. Okay, so I agree. Um, when we are trying to uh, uh, end tax and incentive, it must be selective. We must see whether the taxation that we are waiving, uh, whether we were granting tax on luxury goods, for instance, somebody that is, you know, uh, importing a rice rice. Okay, and you are not you are providing waivers for such person. Okay, those are the kind of people we hope that the government will cut down taxation on. But people that are you know are importing some essential you know commodities, where we do not have local manufacturing, then the government need to rethink that. In fact, let me give you an example. You will see that most farmers will tell you that imported fertilizers are cheaper than local. Uh, fertilizer. That's what we get from uh, much of the local farmers. Why is it so? Because there are, you know, limited infrastructure to support local manufacturing. So on the basis of that, we would expect that the tax that we collect from those important, say, fertilizer, if we place tax on them, we would use it to provide the basic infrastructure that will reduce the cost of production of local manufacturers. Say Dangote, for instance, he should have electricity, he should have good roads and all that, so that his cost of production and his cost of operation will reduce, and that will bring down the cost of his production. Okay? And that will... Okay, uh, the network wouldn't let us have a smooth <laughs> conversation, but I'm having so much fun actually mm -hmm. having uh, this conversation with Dr. Okoli. Uh, and he just made a valid point that struck me when he said we're taxing poverty. Mm -hmm. It, it, you know, it, it, it sounds like a play on words, but it's something serious. Yeah, we get, because, okay, take for instance, if the fuel uh, price goes up, mm -hmm. It is the people who take the buses that will pay. The drivers are not concerned because if the price of a drop was 50 naira, he will jack it up to 100 or 150. Mm -hmm. So he, he doesn't lose anything. He would it still is, buy fuel. It is the person who has been going to work every day and earning 50,000 that will now be paying, instead of maybe uh, 10,000 in a month for transportation. transportation, will now be paying like 25,000 to go to work. And the salary will not increase because the fuel increased. <laughs> so which means your poverty will become greater. Ah. And the person who owns the filling station that because of whatever thing, things have become costlier, will add the price. Mm -hmm. So he gets richer, you get poorer. Oh so you're goodness. taxing poverty. It happens to every, every, every sector. And the person who is going to the farm to bring the produce to the market will now have to pay more. And if he has to pay more, mm. the prices of the food will have to go up. So if you're buying a paint robot of Gary for 1,000 Naira now, you might be buying it for 5,000. Serious. Dr. Okoli, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I want you. Okay, so when, when this happens, we get to pour out our minds. I, <laughs> I, I, want, I want to believe you heard the conversation we were having just before you got back. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 you know, just the point I was making mm. that, you know, uh, people are on fixed salaries. Mm. And so when you uh, increase taxes, say, for instance, on petroleum products, the owner of the filling station increases it mm. and passes it to, uh, you know, uh, the, the final consumer whose salary is fixed mm. and then transportation would increase and all that. So, mm. you know, it, it just boils down to the argument that our taxing system at the moment appears to be taxing poverty. Okay, because you know, in my opinion, yeah. Yeah, this conversation that we were having just, uh, you know, with that quick break was stemmed off of the points that you made earlier about taxing poverty. Uh, because we're, yeah. ra we're rounding off on this segment because, you know, we have yeah. another topic to talk about. Uh, I, okay. I want you to tell us how can it be done better? Say you are in a position to make changes or make decisions that could cause positive changes. How would you make the situation better? And just, just as a follow-up to that, as you're answering that, the taxing <clears throat> system in Nigeria, uh, it seems to be like 
there's no data even to even say that they know who they're taxing and they know who should not be taxed and all mm. that. So how can there be a revamp of the entire system so that whether they're taxing or not taxing, we know that they're doing it rightly? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, if I'm to offer um, op um, or, or suggestions, so to say, on the way forward, I would believe if we take petroleum uh, products, uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, we should support uh, local manufacturing. And when we support uh, local manufacturing, one way to support local manufacturing is to, um, you know, increase tax or levies or import duties on, you know, the, the, the competing goods that are imported from outside and then use the money to provide infrastructure. Look, what the average local manufacturer requires are infrastructure. Good roads, electricity, you know, and there is nothing wrong with, you know, subsidy in the short term. If you look at developed economies across the world, there were times where they subsidized. Okay, mm -hmm. even in the Asian tigers and all that, you know, they use what we call the developmental state model, where they supported, you know, their agriculture and then use the resources they got from there to move into the technology. We can do the same here. In the short run, we can subsidize the activities of the local manufacturers, support them with infrastructure structure and then as they grow up as they got to a certain stage that they become profitable we can gradually increase their tax for instance in the in the petroleum industry we can support the local refining i'm not saying at the moment you know if you look at the way the country you know everywhere it is no longer efficient to allow the government to completely own the you know refineries let's support smaller refineries but let's provide you know, conducive environment. Then the small and medium scale industry. If you go to the market, you will see women, old women, who are carrying vegetable of less than 500 naira. But you will see persons who are suspected to be agents of some levels of government who go to tax them on that, you know, yeah. local, on not, they are not even taxing their profit, they are taxing the capital. You, you know, you will see the barrel pusher that makes about 1,000 naira. Find out how much he is taxed, you know, by some local agents. Now, such kind of people are people we should provide support to. So we should lessen tax, you know, on the business agents, especially the small and medium scale businesses, provide incentives for them, you know. And then the, 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 there are luxury goods. If you go around Lagos, if you go around Abuja, you will see luxury houses, you know, that are occupied sometimes only by the gates men. Why can we not tax you know, uh, such kind of uh, livelihood. So we should increase our tax, make our tax be progressive, allow the small and medium scale industries to thrive, support them with subsidy. We need that at this point of our development. We must not take all the, uh, you know, the, 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 the prescriptions of the World Bank, the Washington and post-Washington consensus. We must not take them. Okay, that means uh, in effect, he has um, he supports what uh, Governor Soludo just did. Yes, uh, removing the taxes from barrel pushers and the people that he mentioned. Artisans. But my yes. fear is that something like that was done in Cross River State as well, but as we speak, these people are still being taxed. Mm. I don't know where they do make the returns to and who gives them the go ahead because they have not been prosecuted, they have not been challenged by any government authority, but they say, don't tax barrel pushers, don't tax uh, uh, so even some taxi drivers, mm. low income earners, but the people are still on the street taxing them in one <laughs> way or the other. So why are these people not held mm. uh, accountable or held and prosecuted and some action shown by the same governor who said, don't tax them? I, I just it just beats me. So maybe it's because of the data that we're talking about. Nobody knows yes, who's doing what and actually. how many people are it's, Makes it's, sense. It's, it's, let's just take a break. Yes, it's still the run up <laughs> and, and we will be yeah. return in a bit. Stay Do with us. Dr. Kole will still be here to talk on something else. So let's just give ourselves a breather. <laughs>